Airy and Bert were delighted by the new arrivals. The fat controller was constantly seeking a means of strengthening his workforce, so he brought in two new diesels to assist. Good day. We've never seen you two before. You come as I assume? Yes, yes, of course. I might say I had a connection, particularly a brother. No matter, I suppose that shall bring us to the introductions. I am Norman, or Nor, if you find it much more efficient to utter as few vowel and consonant sounds as possible in everyday speech. I thought it was your nickname. Paxton, that is exactly what that explanation implies. And you, obviously, are quite befuddled as usual. Be who the what now? <laughs> Look at the little runt. No idea what the blazes is going on. Oh, lovely, isn't it? Show me those steam engines who should really be in charge around here, will you? Make us proud, you little runt. And don't mess things up like Splitter and Dodge did. Oh, that was rather humiliating. Seriously, cramping our style. Show them who's up to date. And who belongs on the scrap heap. <laughs> <laughs> At the shunting yard, the manager greeted them warmly. Glad to see the new task force. We definitely could use the help around here. Thomas, Percy and Toby will be more than happy to show you the ropes. They know the branch line like the back of their bumpers. I'm sure they will be very helpful. Paxton and Norman were anxious to start work. They bustled dutifully all afternoon, pushing and pulling freight cars into their proper site. While Norman was busy elsewhere, Paxton marshaled a goods train for Thomas to take to the junction. Thank you. I hope you're enjoying yourselves. It's always exciting when you're new somewhere. Keep a good eye on those cars. They are troublesome. Sure thing, replied Paxton and he watched Thomas pull out of the yard in his carefree way. Have you put into any consideration, Paxton, in the proposition those smelting diesels bestowed upon yeah, us? Yeah, I have. Well, has it occurred to you that this yard is teeming with engines of the steam-driven persuasion? Why, yes. I suppose it has. You must be aware, then, that we must assert ourselves. Being of the modern design, we must acknowledge our superiority. It is our duty, as newcomers, to take charge and seize an ever-so-crucial opportunity. What's that? To replace, re-establish, and renew every radical concept that holds this railway together. But are you sure those diesels were right in telling us that? Thomas seems like a really kind the engine- The survival of the fittest, my dear Paxton. Absolutely elementary. Trust me, you're young yet. It will all make sense in due time. Norman then proceeded to push a long line of freight cars into a siding, but his engine spluttered and groaned, and soon a cloud of smoke rose into the air. <coughs> Perhaps <coughs> it wasn't survival of the fittest that marked our superiority, Paxton. Really? What is it then? It is quite simply being more clever than our adversary at every given moment. Oh. Take your shunting, for instance. This yard is separated into several distinct lines. If you took full advantage of the reversing line, you could simply roam back and forth as you pleased as opposed to gallivanting off on the loop, thus increasing your overall efficiency tenfold. I'm a bit discombobulated at present. Shunted, if you will. The men refuse to look over me properly. I will simply be a watchful eye and proceed to bestow upon you any beneficial advice I can conjure. However, in the meantime... What is it, Norm? Ha 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 figures! Paxton liked Norman, but was unsure if it was just to adhere to such a superiority complex. He continued to work hard, and made friends with all the engines on the branch line, diesel or steam. 
fish had crept into my boiler from the pail my crew used to bring up water from the river, and the fat controller and the driver and fireman had to fish them out. <laughs> You've had a lot of wonderful adventures. I'm sure you will too, sooner or later. You never know when you'll have one. Goodbye, Pax. Goodbye, Thomas. One night, in his siding, Norman found it hard to sleep. He heard the fat controller discussing an important matter with the yard manager. What do we suppose we do? We can't mend him here properly. I suppose we'll have to send him back. The trial is almost over anyhow. Paxton will remain on Sodor, and Norman will be returned to the mainland. Good morning, Norm. How are you feeling today? In considerable need of a swift and effective retribution. What? Norman used remarkable discretion so that their drivers would not overhear. I'm being sent back to the mainland, Paxton. Which means... No! Apparently it's not in the best interest of the Fat Controller to see to my repairs. I am faulty, apparently. What about your brother? Didn't you say he worked here? He's in fine order, I assume. It's hopeless to reflect on such things. We must take action. We must stage... an accident. Whatever for? If we could, in some shape or form, put one of these steam-driven artifacts out of commission, it would be an acceptable course of action to see to my repairs, as opposed to removing me from the picture entirely. But Norm, that's insane. They've been kind to us. Do as I say. You are my only means of carrying out my plan. Returning to the dark depths from whence I came can only result in being in several pieces and no longer existing. Which is, upon closer observation, twice as unpleasant as I had initially suspected. Do what is right, and listen to my plan. In order to take full advantage of the circumstances, the three o'clock goods must be as close behind your stone train as possible without a single delay. Therefore, dawdle. Now from what I can recall, there's a particular truck in the yard that smiles much too frequently. He is crucial. Heavy strain and rusted framework have loosened his front coupling hook. Strategize your shunting prior so that he is the last truck, so when you roll around, we'll have him right where you want him. And now the final stage. Upon climbing the hill, gun it. Run as roughly as you've ever gone before, without giving your driver much concern. The strain should eventually be too much and a breakaway will occur causing our good friend Percy to be severely compromised. And you will preserve the vitality of a friend in need, so I can be the really useful engine I deserve to be. Paxton was approaching the hill, but met Thomas at the station. You all right, Pax? Well, I'm fine, just to feel like I'm- Oh, sorry, can't talk. I have to hurry, my passengers will become anxious. Cheer up, will ya? Making a terrible mistake. Paxton knew that he could no longer have any part in the plan. However, he didn't know how to explain the predicament to his driver without landing Norman into even more trouble. His driver pulled the lever, but Paxton spoke up. He had an idea. Driver, the coupling seems loose. Can you go and inspect it, please? The driver did so. He had had the same suspicion. All is well, just a tad rusty. Really? Perhaps. Suddenly, Percy rolled by. The signalman had been alerted earlier so that Paxton could be diverted onto a siding so the goods train could pass. To Paxton's dismay, Percy had a single truck, identical to Norman's description, coupled to the front of his train. Percy began to climb the hill furiously. Percy has the truck with the defective coupling, which means... I'll bust my buffers, not again! Go on, go on, go on! We have to stop them! Quickly, the signalman set the point so Paxton was facing the runaway. He reversed slowly, so he could gradually slow them down. The guard of Percy's train had jumped clear, 
but had staggered over to the bridge where Paxton was situated. Thought you had things under control, little hero. So I jumped clear out of that mess. You prevented a serious accident. Many people could have been seriously hurt if you hadn't stepped in. In that case, consider it a miracle that I still have my limbs. Dear Lord, are you alright? Oh yeah. Had a nice soft cab window to cushion the collision. Some railway men don't jump ship at the first sign of danger, you know. Paxton was rescued and sent for repairs in record time. The fat controller kindly came to see him. Remarkable devotion to the railway's cause, particularly from a newcomer. It is an honor to have you working under my fleet. Perhaps after you are mended, you could use a change of scenery. Would you be interested in working at the Blue Mountain Quarry? Oh yes, please sir, that would be nice. Paxton was relieved that all was well but knew that it was important to reveal the truth of the matter at hand. Hmm, an interesting proposition. I'm disappointed to hear that this is a plot that you diffused. This will never happen again. Norman will be dealt with. But I believe I have a greater understanding of where the roots of this problem truly are. Your dedication and kindness is a reflection of the goodness in Norman too. His uncanny wit is indeed phenomenal. I will have him straightened out. Paxton waited expectantly. And he will be mended to be part of the Northwestern Railway. Paxton was overjoyed. All was right in the world. Paxton and Norman are now in good working order and are proud members of the fleet. They coexist with the diversity of their railway and now go as far as to embrace it. What's not to like about steam engines? Kindest engines I've ever met. I can be friends with whoever I like. This notion was well received by many, diesel or steam. Norman has also received a marvelous reawakening. The fat controller and him had a long chat, and he had a much better grasp of the truth. Petty conceit is simply a mindless course of action. Every engine on this railway is truly an enterprising engine. The only thing that tarnishes their potential is simply not acknowledging it. Acceptance will forever be the strongest asset you will ever know.